Tennessee is finally getting its flowers for what it has done basically since the jump this season. And I want to get through that, and I want to talk about that as we go through the AP Top 25. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps people discover the show, and it makes me feel good as we are approaching 110,000 subscribers here to the number one college football show where we talk college football every day, all the time, full time. We do live shows on at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. We'll do one later this evening at 7 p.m. on Sunday, and then on Tuesdays, well, this Tuesday we're going to go at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'm going to do a hit with Keyshawn Johnson on All Facts No Breaks uh, uh, during our normally scheduled time. Be sure to check that out. And I'll be back here on Saturday night but from a different location, and I'll explain more about that a little bit later on. So let's start with Texas at number one after thumping ULM 51-3. to they did it with Arch Manning at quarterback. He is QB2, and he showed why he's QB2. He played what he thought was basically a C-plus game. And I don't think that that's too far out into the future, right? Like, I did not expect him to come back and do what he did against UTSA, but he was good, right? He was really good. And Jaden Blue was better. He had 124 yards on the ground and three rushing touchdowns. Texas looks like a number one ranked team in the country, and that's as it should be, as we've been expecting Texas to be back since 2008. And it's nice that they got their first win as a top five team since 2008. Number two, the Georgia Bulldogs at 3-0. and They're coming off a bye. They get an opportunity to reclaim this spot for me with a decisive win against Alabama this weekend. If they go to Bryant-Denny at Nick Saban Field and they are able to unseat an Alabama offense led by one black dynamite, that is Jalen Milrow because that man is explosive, we might see... Georgia talking noise like bullhorn. We might see exactly what it means for Georgia to put the hurt on Alabama and perhaps not just avenge that SEC championship game last year, but really throw down a marker about who this program is after what was nearly an embarrassing loss to Kentucky, but one where they escaped the, uh, with the victory. That would also mean that they go on the road back-to-back -back and they would get a top-five win on the road that's more than anybody else has been able to do this year so far. Number three, Ohio State. They ain't played nobody. I understand that. I get it. But for me, Ohio State, Georgia, Texas, from the eye test and from what they've showed, you could all rank them at one for me, and I would be okay with it. They mashed Taters Marshall, 49-14. to Quinshawn Juckins rushed for 173 yards on 14 rushes. It took one 86 yards to the house. I think Will Howard has the best job in football as he gets to spread the ball out to Quinshawn Jenkins, Travion Henderson, Emeka Ibuka, Carnell Tate, and of course, Jeremiah Smith, who I think is going to slowly but surely eke into the conversation for the Belitnikoff Award if he continues the pace that he is on. He leads Ohio State in receiving as a true freshman. Not too damn bad. Number four, Alabama. I mentioned Jalen Milrow and what he's been able to do. That offense can just hit you over the head anytime they want. He's a walk-in explosive play. Either he's going to throw it deep and somebody's going to catch it for a touchdown, maybe Ryan Williams, who's also going to eke into that uh, Blitten a couple award conversation as he, Nick Nash, and J.J. have all kind of established themselves as three of the best wide receivers in the sport, and two of those are on two of the best teams, uh, two of the top four teams in the sport. I think for Alabama, it's more about can you get out the blocks against Georgia? And if you can get out the blocks against Georgia and show us who you are, you have an opportunity to claim that number one overall ranking too because – we think so much of Alabama, we think so much of Georgia, and we think so much quite literally of the SEC. I know this because three, excuse me, four of the top, my goodness, five of the top six teams in the AP uh, poll, and frankly for me, are SEC teams. They're just, it's just deep. And number five, they got Tennessee. I have Tennessee at four. I had Tennessee at four before they beat Oklahoma, just in case anybody wanted to know. But Tennessee has put themselves squarely in the conversation for the national championship because they started at 15, they went to 14, and the way that they've been thumping people up until they got to Oklahoma was drawing our attention. 69 on the mocks, I get it, ain't playing nobody. 71 on Kent State, I get it, it's Kent State. They beat up on an NC State team that turns out ain't very good. They got 59 hung on them by Clemson. But I'm also going to point out this. Tennessee proved that it could win an ugly game where the offense was not good on the road against a top 15 opponent in a top 5 environment. It's not too shabby. Did Nico Iamalava have a Heisman uh, caliber showing? Absolutely not. No. But did he make the throws that he needed to make? Yes. 
they ran the ball 50 plus times. They threw the uh, and they ran like 73 plays. Okay, for Tennessee, this is more about what their defensive pass rush could do. Like their pass rush is one of the best in the sport. They're up there with Georgia, and as far as what that defensive line is capable of doing, because they were just getting home. It seemed like anytime they wanted to. If you sent five, Jackson Arnold was cooked. If you sent four, he was mostly cooked. Tennessee succeeded in getting Jackson Arnold the hell up out of here and brought in the freshman, true freshman Michael Hawkins. For Oklahoma, you woke up this morning, you're thinking about this. If Michael Hawkins starts that game, it's a different game. Is it one that Oklahoma wins? I don't know. But I know this. Oklahoma's defense is elite. And if you think Oklahoma's defense is better than Georgia's defense, then you can answer your own question about what Tennessee might be able to do. If you think that Tennessee is going to face better defenses, tell me who they are, right? That's what I'm saying. Is it going to be Alabama? Is it going to be Georgia? Is it going to be Ohio State? That's the conversation that we need to have around Tennessee. They face what I think is a top 10, if not top 5 defense in all of football, and they went and got a win. That said, Oklahoma forced two turnovers in the first half, one on the 35-yard line, one on the 20-yard line, and then Oklahoma promptly gave the ball back to Tennessee. I don't think that Georgia's going to give you the ball back. I don't think Alabama's going to give you the ball back. I think if anybody else doesn't have Jackson Arnold at quarterback for this one or doesn't have Seth Luttrell calling plays, you're talking about probably losing that game. So that'd be one thing to watch if you are a Tennessee fan. Number six, Ole Miss. Again, they ain't played nobody, but they're destroying everybody that they do play. They beat up on I met Georgia Southern just Saturday. And then they beat up on Wake Forest, and they beat up on Middle Tennessee, and they beat up on Furman. Now they got to go in the SEC, but it feels like a program is going to be right there at the end, pushing for the SEC championship. Number seven, Miami. They got Cam Ward, who feels like a Heisman front runner. Really great quarterback. He threw 400 yards in their win against South Florida, a South Florida that took Alabama into the deep water in the fourth quarter. And frankly, Miami got into the deep water with them in the second half or in the second quarter but they eventually found a way to pull away. Oregon's coming off idle. They're at number eight. Penn State beat up on Kent State 56-0. It's Kent State, but they get a really great Illinois program this week. I'm excited about that one because both Illinois and Penn State need this ranked win. Number 10, Utah was able to beat Oklahoma State without Cam Rising at Boone Pickens, riding Makai Bernard for 183 yards. He had the kind of game that we expected Ollie Gordon to have, and Ollie Gordon hadn't looked like Ollie Gordon all year. Number 11, Missouri got taken into the deep water by Vanderbilt into overtime. And if the kicker can make a field goal, perhaps we're into another overtime. Missouri is kind of looking real Missouri right now, but they are 4-0. Michigan, 3-1. What an ugly football game, but that's the kind of football game they love at Michigan. It was a program win. Man balled the hell out of USC. Ran for 290 yards and won a football game against the number 11 team last year, or at least last week, excuse me, with a quarterback who was 7-12 32 yards. I don't think that's going to win you no Big Ten championship because not unlike Oklahoma, if you had a quarterback, maybe, maybe you win that game by three touchdowns. Because if you put Cade McNamara back there, USC's never in this ball game. Mostly because you can have a credible threat to throw the ball down the field. But Kalel Mullings is turning out to be the guy that we thought Donovan Edwards was. 13 USC, I think that's a little high. I mean, you went to Michigan and you got thumped. You still can't stop the run. You, you, you can't. I need you to do better than that. I need Lincoln Riley to learn better clock management. LSU pulled away from UCLA late. Garrett Nussmeyer is thrown for at least 300 yards in three out of four games. The one he didn't, 285. Louisville is 4-0 in the Jeff Brom era. It's really difficult to beat them in the regular season. They've lost just twice in their last 15 uh, games, and that's in the regular season. That's not too shabby. Notre Dame at 16 pulled away from Miami of Ohio late. Starting to look like Notre Dame or the Notre Dame that we thought they would, but Riley Leonard running for 143 and passing for 154. Clemson, again, as long as you ain't got a ranking next to your name, apparently they're just going to destroy you. It's when they start playing ranked teams that I would like to see Clemson, you know, be Clemson. Iowa State, 3-0, and sneaky good in the Big 12, sneaky good. They beat Arkansas State 52-7. to Why is that important? Because Michigan beat Arkansas State 28-18. to If you're looking at a common opponent, what Iowa State did to Arkansas State is what people would expect Michigan to do to A-State as well. Illinois at 19, great victory on the road against an undefeated Nebraska team. They have two ranked wins uh, in the same season for the first time since 2007, and they're 4-0 for the first time since 2011. Brett Bielema absolutely making it happen up there for the Illini. Oklahoma State at 20 with their first loss against the top tw uh, 25 team. Oklahoma at 21. BYU at 22. 
got a really great win against Kansas State. Uh, thumped them in Provo, 38-7. to It wasn't even close. Just miscue on miscue for Kansas State, a team that we expected might still be, but we expected to be a Big 12 title contender. They're at 23. A&M's at 24 after getting tugged into deep water by Bowling Green. Bowling Green might be somebody because they were pushing Penn State and they're pushing Texas A&M on the road. You better watch your back in the MAC with the Bowling Green Falcons. Boise State at 25 sneaks in there, 2-1 and one off a win against Portland State. I think this is more about what Boise State was doing against Oregon with Ashton Genty because that's not, for me, the number four, uh, 25 team. It'd be a 4-0 and Wazoo. Hello. Wazoo is 4-0. and We should start acting like it. Indiana's also undefeated. Boston College got a really great win against Michigan State. It's a bad look for me if you're going to rush the field on Michigan State. It ain't like that. UNLV got votes. I think that's the top 25 team. They're also undefeated. I think they're the presumptive favorite for me to meet Boise State in a MAC championship game. But, you know, we'll see what that game looks like. We'll see if UNLV can really do something against Boise State and that dynamic running back they have in Ash and Genty. Pittsburgh at 37. 4-0, 4-0, put up 73 on Youngstown State yesterday. Nebraska, 25, first loss of the season. Iowa, 24, resounding win against Minnesota. James Madison put up 70 against North Carolina and probably has the nerve with this big bag of money on their shoulder to go, how do we let UNC score 50 on us? The Dukes out here are styling. South Carolina's a good football team. Liberty's a good football team. Arkansas, great win against Auburn. Also made Hugh Freeze come unglued. That's worth bonus points for me. Also, Quiet as it is kept, Arkansas, 3-1 and one with its own loss coming to an Oklahoma State team that fought its way back into a game against the top 25 team in Utah. Central Florida at 3-0. and oh. They get Colorado this weekend. They get what I think ought to be the Heisman Trophy winner in Travis Hunter this weekend. We'll talk more about that on the live show later this evening. Arizona had two, had two votes. SMU got a really great win against Texas Christian where Sonny Dykes got tossed. Good for Rhett Lashley. Navy gets one. We'll see you all tonight on the live show.